Hello comrades, Commissar Bro here today, showing off the pretty much final version of my mod for making history, The Great War. That's right. There's been so many changes, I'm starting to lose track of what I've done and what countries I've added in and so on and so forth. So I'm basically just going to do this and show off a bunch of countries and we're going to call it a day. <laughs> There's a couple things I need to fix. For example, these two countries still have regular American flags. I'll have to go and kind of mess around with that. I will do that later after this video and uh, yeah, so on. Anyway. So as you can see, one of the first noticeable changes is that the United States has been further divided. All right, so we've got the Commonwealth of the States. The idea is that because the United States could not keep the Empire of Texas and the Union of Socialist California under control, um, the people lost faith in the United States government and reformed it into the Commonwealth of the States. That's right, so that is now what the United States is known as, is the Commonwealth of the States. So, CWS, I guess? I don't know. And then, with the formation of the Commonwealth, three additional factions decided to not join uh, the Commonwealth. The Democratic Republic of the Southern States, as we can see here. The, uh, the Republic of Henveru, right? Which, which is pretty much the, just the Midwest areas there. And also Deseret. That's right, a state that was proposed in about 1849-1850 um, and is actually getting its realization now with the, the pretty much the broken United States uh, crumbling thing. Yeah, yeah. We've also got up here the Alaskan Republic, which is a nationalist state. That's right, it's, it's, very, it's national socialist, so you've got to be careful with them if they actually get some troops. They're clearly not going to get along with the rest of these guys. So yeah. Now, there's still a lot of instability in the United States, which is exactly what I want. Um, you know, occasionally there'll be a rebel group, an uprising, and so on, uh, after a couple of turns, so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. There may be a couple of units that aren't uh, aligned to their faction in the right area. Just ignore that. They will move to where they need to go. And again, I'll work on fixing these flags before I upload that. Um, I've also made it to where each one of these capital cities are fortified with at least one fortress uh, and a trench one or trench two, just to make sure that they're not getting steamrolled. The only country I've really added to South America is uh, Honduras. I allowed Honduras to actually be an existing country, albeit it's still small, has an incredibly small population, and I doubt there's really going to be much you can do with it. But still, I thought it was better to actually allow it to be played than than not. And plus I was breaking up the British Empire anyway, so there's still pieces of the British Empire that exist, but it has been broken up. Anyway, so if we go over to Europe, we see that we have the Anarchy of Ireland. Yeah, look at that Irish band, this little harp and lie, whatever. So the reason for this, uh, for breaking up the UK, obviously, is because a big part of this particular mod is I want the gameplay to be different. Uh, I mean, we've all played World War One, we've all played World War Two, over and over and over, and it's always something that boils down to the UK, the Americans, the Germans, and the Russians every single time. It's it's and in Japan, that's what it is every single time. <laughs> so I got bored of that. So I decided to break up the country, the most powerful countries in the game, and like you can even see here, Germany has been broken into essentially two different factions: the Königsreich and Germany herself. And the Königsreich um, is actually pretty powerful in itself. It's got pieces of Russia as well as having pieces of Germany. Now the Austro-Hungarian Empire has not been broken up because, well, frankly, it never does anything anyway, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, Italy has been broken up into the Sicilian Syndicate here, which is supposed to be a criminal organization. I have seen these two go to war, and I have seen the Sicilian Syndicate almost win. So that's, again, that's a win for me. That's exactly what I was going for. Uh, Scotland has been added as the Scotsman Republic. Uh, up here is the Technocracy of Greenland. This is actually the most technologically advanced country in the entire world, um, with, with armies that literally make no sense and how technologically advanced they are, and that is kind of the purpose. <laughs> They're supposed to be mysterious, enigmatic, and a lot of people aren't going to be messing with them, especially considering if you look at what is defending their home. 
uh, coastal fortifications, fortresses. I mean, their bonuses is they 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 are pretty big. <laughs> They're a pretty powerful force. So yeah, don't mess with them um, if you don't you know if you want to live. You've also got the Huescatan Republic, which is essentially a very fanatical religious organization that is formed out of the northern regions of Spain and the southern regions of France. Um, and this group, from the playthroughs I've seen, have proven to be an incredibly warlike group, which is something I'm very happy with because that was the purpose, was for them to be super warlike um, and to kind of, you know, get involved in a lot of the world's wars. They will declare on Fran they will declare war on France. Don't be surprised. They will win wars against France. Don't be surprised. <laughs> I've also made Luxembourg a massive power as well. Just a basic story behind them is that a few years before the current situation we are in, Germany declared war on France uh, for whatever reason and was whipping their ass, got all the way to Paris, and then Luxembourg, with a mercenary army, decided to rise up and push. Uh, and, and to force the surrender of the main uh, German army, at which point the German leadership decided to, you know, just unconditionally surrender in the war. While the terms aren't as severe as, like, the Treaty of Versailles or so on, uh, they have been forced to, you know, cede land, as we can see here, like the Palatinate and the Rhineland um, and Alsace-Lorraine and the Meuse in Wallonia has also been given to Luxembourg. So to make Luxembourg a very powerful buffer state between France and um, <clears throat> between France and Germany. So it makes for a little bit more interesting gameplay. As you can see here, there's still a few units that haven't moved out of Luxembourg. So yeah, my bad. <laughs> it happens. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what caused the formation of the Königsreich. The Königsreich formed out of the conditions of this war. The Prussians were very pissed that uh, Germany gave up so easily and decided to form a new country. Um, and yeah, basically there was areas with Poles in it that decided they were tired of being under Russian and German rule and joined with the Königsreich. Uh, and the Königsreich now is basically a conglomeration of Poles and Russians and is is doing pretty well for itself frankly <laughs> anyway so um, we move over here to Russia uh, as you can see I've definitely added a couple of countries in Russia not many mind you just a couple um, this one is the Federation of New Transylvania I don't really have backstory for it except for it's kind of meant to be like a joke uh, like uh, you know they're being led by a very pale leader who uh, is known to be awake at all hours of the night um, and disappears randomly uh, and sometimes is found with blood on his coat but again you know speculation say rumors sink ships loose lips sink ships so <laughs> you know people uh, people just accept that he's a weird guy they don't know what he does um, and they try to just ignore it and Frankly, he's formed a powerful little country in between Romania, Austro-Hungary, Russia, and the, the Crimean Soviet Republic. So they, they're, they're happy to have their independence from the more imperialistic European powers. And that moves us on to the Crimean Soviet Republic. The idea of this one is it was formed out of a very large army of Soviet Cossacks. Um, and the Black Sea Fleet of Russia actually... Uh, um, ceded from Russia and joined with this new Crimean Soviet Republic. Um, so, yeah, that's all I got for them. <laughs> and the Cuban Socialist Republic, same kind of idea. They broke off. And, and the, wave, the wave of new countries being formed, uh, think the Arabian Spring. For years, they've been under these imperialistic powers. And finally, people are starting to become self-aware and become conscious of their effect on the world at, at large and are breaking off and forming their own, their own countries which we can pretty much see all throughout uh, the, the world and whatnot. So let's go over to Asia before I go to the Middle East. Oh and that's another country I added into the Khanate of Kiva. Well it was already there but it only had like one territory so I just made it bigger, stronger, faster. Anyway, alright so let's take a look at Asia. Primarily China. That's what I've done the most work with. Uh, with China, we've got the Communist Chinese. 
Uh, the communism has start has taken hold a lot earlier in the world, as we can tell, with the Crimean Soviet Republic. Well, that's not the only communist nation, because communist China has risen up in the northwest of China, sweeping over the deserts and all that good stuff in the mountains, the mountainous people. And uh, it's based out of Yunnan and Shenzhi. So, you know, you've you've got them. The the communist Chinese are hard to play as, like frankly. Um, I know it probably doesn't seem like it, but after just a couple of turns, they're always in a major civil war that cripples them, literally cripples them. So it's really hard to recover from that. It's really hard to win that war. But if you can do it, good on you. You've also got the Republic of China. Republic of China is the same as they were before. I've just literally taken land and army away from them, and so they own this strip here of China. Um, then you've got the Ranbai Rui dynasty which lives here. These people seek to bring back the Middle Kingdom, as it were, to uh, actually create a powerful uh, dynastic empire once again in China. They're based out of Taiwan or Formosa. Uh, they own some of the coastline here. They own these islands here. Um, and then the northern part of the Philippines, which, again, there's somebody else that's been added, the Philippines. I don't really have a backstory for them. They've just been added. <laughs> and we go over here to the Feng Tian State. Now this is basically, I know I have it as a state, but the idea is that it was created out of a bunch of warlords um, who decided to unite together instead of fighting each other and just getting taken out by the Republic of China. They've banded together and actually formed a very powerful country just north of Korea and even with a little piece of Korea. And as such, they are uh, to actually to be relatively feared. Like, not like super feared. I mean, they're not that strong. But the Republic of China, with the Communist Chinese in the Northwest, the Rambai Wei in the Southeast, and the Vietnamese in the Southwest, and with, with, with India, a very unstable India to the West, it doesn't seem logical for them to sit there and pick wars with people for no good reason. So, yeah, they, 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 they tolerate the existence of the Feng Tian state. Uh, for their continued existence um, against whoever may find them uh, unworthy or whatever. Then you have Korea. Yeah, that's right, Korea. Uh, it's Korea. That's what it is. Um, Japan's the same, aside from the fact that I have created a new union called the Hokkaido Union, which is right here. And is that an army? I don't know why there's an army of the Feng Tian State there. I might have to fix that. I didn't realize that. My bad. So that's pretty much all that's been done with Asia. Just this part, anyway. I considered making an Indonesia, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'll just let the Dutch keep it and go from there. India has been broken up into a few powers as well. Um, as you can see here, the Rajputana Agency has gained a lot more power and uh, has basically formed its own independent nation. No longer is it under the British control. Um, and is formed. it's forming its own little empire in India. There's also the Moog, the Moog Sickle Empire uh, that I've added in as well, uh, which, again, is the same concept. It's pretty much there just to break up India. Um, and then you've got the Nizam Remnant, who want to recreate the Nizam Kingdom. That was actually in this area here of India uh, back in the 1700s. They don't have an army, but they do have enough population and the enough food to be able to build something out of that. So that'll be interesting to see if people can actually pull that off. Um, and that brings us to the real meat of the game. The main purpose of this mod um, is actually, surprisingly enough, not to play as all those other countries. Those ones are just there to add a little bit more show and spectacle. The main purpose of this mod was created so that you could play as Djibouti. That's right. In an actual fun way, not necessarily a way that's just going to lead to the death and destruction of Djibouti very easily. Because in base making history, it's not very promotive to play. It, it, like, it doesn't really promote playing a small country like this and actually succeeding. It really doesn't. Um, but with the power of the editor, I have actually turned Djibouti into a fun country to play as um, that leads to an incredibly interesting making history experience and so on. So, yeah, 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 that's the main purpose of this mod. As you can see, I've added in Commissars Djibouti, um, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Somalia, um, and the Dervish, Dervish State was already there, but I've also added in the Rifters Union, which is right down here. 
they're kind of a, a nod to Mad Max if you look at the description. They're supposed to be like, they love diesel, diesel engines, that's their shit. Um, I've turned German East Africa into Taganyika. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I couldn't come up with a good name anyway, so I just took a real name that existed at one point. Uh, Congo has been turned into the Congo. <laughs> the Belgian Congo has been turned into Congo because fuck it. Um, then you've got Cameroon. You've got Northern Nigeria. The Emirate of Kudai. The Sultanate of Darfur has been made larger. Um, Libya has been created it's into its own country. Country. The Sultanate of Egypt is now independent of England. Uh, no longer is it under the British command. The Middle East where is somewhere you're pretty much like the the way I kind of see this going with Com with Commissar Djibouti. You take over this region, you take over this region, this region, uh, or well, you take over this region, this region, this region, um, this region, this region, so on and so forth. And you kind of move that way. And then once you kind of unify this area, as long as you haven't pissed off everyone around you, uh, you can kind of move up here and start fighting up against the four great emirates. Now, the emirate of Jabal Shamar and the emirate of Nejd like already start at war they are already at war with each other so what I've done is I've added two more emirates to kind of make the gameplay a little bit more interesting um, so the Yemeni Chad emirate and the emirate of Abu Jabbar or Jakar so even though the fact that it still has a British flag I don't really know what I can do about that <laughs> but anyway the important part is that it is indeed an independent country. All of these emirates are independent, and the idea is to be that, like, you know, if you actually play as one of the emirates, you take out the other emirates and you create one gigantic emirate in the Middle East, sort of like a modern-day Saudi Arabia, in a sense. That's And that's kind of the goal of what you're supposed to do with that. Now, a uh, powerful power from the you know east africa can definitely come in and just kind of wipe you out if you're not careful if you're not paying attention so there's a lot of there's a lot of tension going on there when you're playing there that you got to be careful about uh because you could pretty much just get wiped out and even then if you piss off the ottoman empire good luck like <laughs> they're already kind of mad that there's wars going on in their their you know previous holdings so you got to kind of be careful with that more countries that have been added, uh, if we look in West Africa, we've got the Free Cities of West Africa, we've got the Mari Kingdom, the Maris Berber Federation, the uh, Gorenzi Caliphate, the Tunisian State, like I already said Libya. Um, the idea uh, behind these two countries is that they hate each other, or at least they're supposed to. I haven't really uh, reflected that in the diplomatic influence yet, but they hate each other. Um, these guys, the Gorenzi Caliphate, are a far more traditionalist uh Cal like in, in terms of how Islam works. They are incredibly, incredibly traditionalist um, and they do not tolerate belief in any other form of Islam, nor do they really even support other religions. There's they, That's kind of their thing. That's what they do. Um, the Tunisian state is the complete opposite. The Tunisian state is actually a country that universally accepts Islamic practices of all kinds. Um, and for, they even, you know, promote uh, free, uh, universal religion, as it were. Like, if you believe in something, that's okay. Come to the Tunisian state. This is meant to be a safe haven from, you know, the more, like, the religious persecution that occurs all around the world. We're, we're here to, you know, keep you safe, basically. So these two hate each other, absolutely, because of their two completely different beliefs in uh, Islam and even just how religion works and so on. Um, so yeah, the Gorenzi Caliphate and the Tunisian state. That's right. The Mars Berber Federation is supposed to be like it was created out of uh, all the major tribes in the area who they were tired of, you know, European imperialism and shook off the shackles, beat the shit out of them with some assistance from uh, I don't remember if I said it was the Spanish or the Americans. I don't know. Basically, what they did is they, they beat the Europeans out. The Basically, the Mars Berber Federation inspired these other cities to break away from European imperialism and create their own countries. So the Mari Kingdom, for example, that's hence why it looks so weird. It's because it's kind of a loose, uh, you know, just a loose kingdom, very, very loosely made <laughs> and very loosely held together. So... 
Um, don't be surprised if within a couple of turns war starts breaking out in the Mari Kingdom because people have their own idea of how things should be ruled. The same thing with the free cities of West Africa. This is literally just a union of city-states that broke off from uh, European power and now exist as their own country. Their capital is Freetown, but as you can see, the capital is actually bro like completely separated from the rest of the country because of Liberia and the Mari Kingdom. So this leaves the free cities of West Africa at a major disadvantage. Uh, being that their capital is so far away from the rest of their cities. So again, it kind of adds a little bit of challenge there. Some of these uh, countries like northern Nigeria are just kind of there, you know, I mean, to be there. I just, I didn't want major European influence in um, Europe, or in Africa. I mean, the British still pretty much solidly control the southern part of, um, of Africa. But... Germany no longer really has any territories here. As you can see, Basterland has been turned into its own country with a pretty neat flag. Um, and overall, it's pretty cool. Then you've got the realm of Mad Agascar. That's right. Mad Agascar is an insane king uh, who is just known for doing some really crazy shit. Um, and yet he rules Madagascar. His people surprisingly love him. Uh, despite the fact that he is so batshit insane. Um, and at least they feel they have more freedoms and liberties in the realm of Madagascar than they do in most other places in the world. So yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, anyway. So that's kind of the overview. I pretty much touched on um, most of these countries, if not all of them. Um, I know this seems kind of weird, like all over the place, because it most certainly is. But the experience is mostly meant to bring down the European powers, to make them less powerful, to allow for more crazy gameplay to occur. Um, you know, more rebellions and stuff like that. It's more challenging for a player to have to um, put down constant rebellions or something than it is taking on just like the Ottoman Empire, for example. The Ottoman Empire is pretty easy to beat uh, no matter who you play as. So, I mean, it's, it's more fun that... You know, while you're fighting a war, your people don't like that war, and then boom, you know, it, it didn't work out very well. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's 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 my mod. So <laughs> I'm going to be uploading it on Steam today. So if you want to check check it out and try its pretty much final version, um, then go for it and have fun and enjoy yourself. And like I said, before I do that, I am going to try and fix those two flags, hopefully. But anyway, this has been Kamasabro. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the mod, and I'll see you next time.